The GOAT, the greatest of all time. Whether it's Jordan versus LeBron, Messi versus Ronaldo, there is always a debate on who is the greatest of all time. You can sit there and compare who has more MVPs, who has more points, goals, this and that, but how do you crown a GOAT in wrestling? To simply put it, in my opinion, there is no one GOAT in wrestling. There can't be. If there was one GOAT, I don't know, maybe it's Bruno San Martino, who sold out MSG more times than my parents beat me as a kid, but then there's Hulk Hogan, who made wrestling explode in the 80s, but what about Stone Cold Steve? Austin, who was the biggest draw of the hottest period in wrestling. But on the flip side, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels are better wrestlers than them all. Or is it all about the characters? The Undertaker. But then what about Rock, Ric Flair, Randy Savage? The list just goes on and on and trust me, it's impossible, it is all subjective. In wrestling, everyone will have their own GOAT. Depending when you grew up, what era you belong to, which wrestler made you fall in love with wrestling, it's all subjective and it's all personal opinion and that is totally fine. How I choose my wrestling go it's simple which wrestler in my life has brought me the most joy for some, it was Hogan being all cracked out, ripping off his shirt, and for some, it was Austin flipping the bird and stunning Vince, but for some fans like me, it was just John Cena doing his thing. John Cena will forever be my wrestling GOAT. I don't care if Austin sold more merch, I don't care if Hogan packs 300,000 into the Superdome and lifted a 900 pound Andre, for me and a vast majority of us late 90s and early 2000s kids, John Cena is our GOAT. This is the man who made me fall in love with wrestling. Without John Cena, I don't think there ever would have been a wrestling gift. Sure, I loved wrestling, but without John Cena, I don't think I ever get as deep into it as I got as a kid. As a kid watching SmackDown, Cena would walk out dropping bars, wearing throwback jerseys, wear life brass knuckles, the chain. He was just so cool. This was a time period when 50 Cent was the biggest thing out, and it was so clear that Cena was inspired by G Unit. So we as kids who thought 50 Cent was a god, of course we gravitated towards John Cena. He had that swagger, he had that charisma, he had the look, the iconic you can't see me is all we did at school. What was special about Cena's rise for me was this was the first true rise I saw. Wrestlers like Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Kurt Angle, they were established. So even though I liked them, I never had that attachment. But here I was a little kid watching John Cena become the US champion, fighting the most random idiots like Rene Dupree and Kenzo Suzuki, but I loved it. Just hearing his old theme and the crowd going wild made me mark out as a kid. Every single week I would watch Smackdown to see what was John gonna do next. From rap battles to wrestling matches, it was always just so fun. I was so into everything he did, I remember he was beating up everyone and then one week Carlito made his debut and won after using Cena's own chain. He legit beat Cena and snatched his chain and I was so angry and I was like, well at least it can't get any worse. Well then apparently next week Carlito's bodyguard Jesus stabbed John Cena. Yeah, imagine being 6 years old and finding out your hero got stabbed. But it was all good, even though he had just gotten stabbed, I still believed in him, I knew he was gonna come back with a vengeance, and he did, he came back and he clapped Carlito and Jesus like the biggest savage, and he took back that US championship. Bro, the whole time as a kid, I didn't know his name was Jesus, I couldn't pronounce that as a kid, I was a dumbass. The whole time, I literally thought John Cena was beating up a guy named Jesus. But yeah, that's where the love started, being 6 years old, watching Smackdown on the score, channel 53 in Toronto, and seeing this white boy just do his thing, wearing Blue Jays jerseys these clapping people, rapping, it was perfect. And Cena just kept on getting better and better. He almost won the Rumble, he started getting himself into bigger and bigger matches, the cheers got louder and louder, and even as a kid I knew it was coming. He was going to be the WWE Champion one day. And I didn't have to wait long. I knew Cena could do this, I knew he could easily beat JBL if he had the chance, and that's what he did. WrestleMania 21, Cena walked in there and he beat JBL, and the rest was history. This was the guy who I first saw at Survivor Series 2003 watching with my older cousins, seeing him F you the big show and just being shook. And over the months, over a year, I saw him slowly, slowly rise and now here I was with the same older cousins, seeing him at WrestleMania become the WWE Champion. It was the moment right here where I was like, yo, I love wrestling. Like I remember telling my mom, this is the best day ever and it was because of John Cena. And that was it. I was hooked. 
if I wasn't already. It's hard to explain how big Cena became once he became the champion unless you lived it. He was an actual mainstream star. Cena was the champion and everywhere you went, Cena was there. Every kid wanted a John Cena shirt. He had a new theme song. He changed the championship belt into a spinner belt, which for us kids was beautiful. And then this man dropped a full rap album. And the cover, of course, was the spinner belt. I remember Cena performed on Raw, full out with the stage and the DJ. He even had a music video for the song Bad Man, which I would watch over and over. And the album is actually fire. I still listen to songs like If It All Ended Tomorrow and Right Now to this day. I literally begged my mom. I had the flyer with me in my hand. I'm like, mom, can we please go get this CD? And yo, bless her soul. She held it down. We went there. We got it. And luckily, English is her second language. So she didn't know what explicit lyrics meant. So I got that bad boy. And oh my God, it was like... I was so happy. From 2005 and onwards, it was a wrap. John Cena was everything. Every feud he had, every match he had, I was into it. Whether it was the beef with Jericho, Angle, Triple H, RVD, Edge, whoever, it was always something special and he had so many great matches back then. One Night Stand against RVD. TLC with Edge, Last Man Standing vs Umaga, the HBK matches including the one where they went an hour on Raw, the legendary Fatal 4 way at Backlash, yo even his matches with the great Kali were somehow bangers and that was just a one year span. You had the fire shirts, you had the catchphrases, you had the never give up attitude, the champ is here, everything about it, it was just, it was just fun. Yes he was Superman, but I was a kid so of course I loved Superman, I remember finding out how Cena was injured and had to let go of the title and I was devastated. And then the iconic 2008 Royal Rumble happened. The obsession I had with Cena from 2004 until 2009 will never be matched. He was my Hulk Hogan. He was my Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels. He was my Rock or Austin. He was the guy. So that alone would explain why John Cena is my GOAT, but there's a little more to the story. In 2010, it all changed. Back in 2010, I joined a bunch of wrestling groups on Facebook and I came across a page that still runs for some reason called Cena Cannot Wrestle. And all I saw was a bunch of countless posts of older wrestling fans just roasting Cena. How he sucks, how he can't do anything, he can't wrestle, his promos are cringe, this and that. And little me just sat there reading it and I was like, well... These guys clearly know more about wrestling than me, and they are older, so they must be right. 12 year old me literally got brainwashed into hating John Cena because of Facebook. And yeah, from that point on, I was the biggest Cena hater for some reason. Whoever reversed, I was cheering for them. I was like the biggest fan of his opponent. I legit began to hate Cena because I wanted to be cool. I wanted to be like the older fans. I wanted to come off as smart. Like, oh, look at me. I know everything about wrestling. And real wrestling fans know that Cena sucks. I was 12 years old. The Rock came back and I was like, yo, screw Cena. Cena sucks. The Rock is the GOAT. I started going all, oh my god, I was born in the wrong generation. Why couldn't I have been a kid when The Rock was wrestling? He's so much better than Cena. I legit forgot about all the joy Cena brought me. So when Punk beat Cena, I was happy. When The Rock beat Cena, I was happy. Anytime Cena lost, I was happy. I, for some reason, hated this man. All because I was basically brainwashed into doing so by people on the internet. I I turned on the man who made me such a big wrestling fan in the first place. But then around 2013, your boy got older, I was in high school now, I would still go to these wrestling forums and sites, I would see videos on YouTube of fans ranting about Cena, I would see all these geeks just crying about WWE, crying about how Cena sucks and he ruined wrestling, this and that, and after a while it just became way too much. And I was just like, that's who turned me against Cena, and it just clicked, it was like, Yo, those guys are fucking losers. I had a moment of clarity, shout out Jay-Z, where I was like, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be one of those people who are in the Facebook groups and on the forums who can't enjoy anything because they didn't just hate John Cena most of the time. They hated everything. It was just filled with negativity. And I was like, yo, I love wrestling. All right. I love this thing. I don't want to spend all my time just being negative about it. I don't want to be like them. And I was like, yo, I really spent the past three years being brainwashed into hating this man who made me fall in love with this in the first place. And I was just like, nah, 
and I was back. I was like, screw it. I love John Cena. And I was back to being the biggest Cena fan ever. And from 2013 until 2017, every time Cena came out, I felt like a kid again. Whether it was for a promo, whether it was for a match, when that music hit and I saw him in the ring, either cutting a promo or giving the F you to someone, I smiled because I realized that he was my GOAT. Everyone has one. Yours might be different like I mentioned before. Yours might be Hogan or Austin or if you're my age, it might even be Randy Orton, Edge, Jeff Hardy, CM Punk, whoever. But everyone has their own GOAT. And to me, Cena is mine because nobody in my life has brought me as much joy watching wrestling as John Cena. Cena is the definition of a star. He had the charisma, he had the look, when he spoke we listened, when he wrestled it was a big deal, when he came out and the music hit, whether it was booze or cheers, the arena erupted, it was unlike anything else. When Cena walked out for a pay per view main event or the show closer on Raw, it felt like game 7 of the NBA finals, it felt like a big fight, a big match and people cared, they wanted to see him lose or they wanted to see him win, either way they were watching and over the years he had so so many classic matches. Of course the matches I mentioned before but Money in the Bank 2011, all of his matches with CM Punk, Once in a Lifetime, Extreme Rules against Brock Lesnar, his 3000 matches with Orton, even the Batista ones were fire, the legendary Daniel Bryan vs John Cena match from 2013 and how can we ever forget about 2015 John Cena. The triple threat with Rollins and Lesnar is iconic, one of the best triple threats of all time, his matches with Kevin Owens, his Raw match with Cesaro the entire US Open Challenge, him and Rusev always held it down, and lastly, the legendary Cena vs AJ Styles. When the lights were on bright and Cena was up, you knew you were getting something special. Whether it was a classic match or a spectacle or even a promo, it was special. He had that it factor. He not only made his matches feel special, but the WWE in general felt more special when John Cena was there. This is the man who walked into ECW One Night Stand 2006 like a game and he held it down. He walked into Chicago at Money in the Bank and he didn't even flinch. This is the man who spent majority of his career being booed by half of the fans, but he never folded. Instead, always rose to the occasion. For a solid 11 years, this man was on top of the company, he was the face of the company, and honestly, he was the face of wrestling. He barely had time off, and even when he was injured, he always came back as soon as he could. For 11 years, he did everything he could for wrestling. There was never any controversy. He never got in trouble, he was the most perfect face of the company you could ask for. And to me, to be the GOAT of anything, it isn't just what you do in your field, okay? You can be a great wrestler, a great ball player, whatever. It's what you do with your fame and with your greatness. It's what you do outside of it that really elevates you. And John Cena is the most perfect example. This man is one of the busiest men in the world, and he still set the record for most make-a-wishes granted in history. He goes out of his way to lift the spirits of children who don't have much left. All they want to do is meet him. That is their dying wish. They could wish for anything and they wish to meet John Cena. He's done it for over a decade and it's the most beautiful thing ever and he's done it more than anybody else. The pandemic didn't stop him from granting wishes. This man basically made it his mission. If I could only show one video to show people on why I think Cena is the GOAT, why he's my GOAT, it could be of him rapping against some wrestler, it could be his entrance at one night stand, it could be one of his matches or promos, Royal Rumble return, something wrestling related, but all I would really show them is this video of Cena reading letters from his fans. If you've never seen it, the link is in the description, but it's Cena just reading letters from his fans, fans we inspired, fans that didn't have much hope that looked to Cena for inspiration, fans whose lives were changed because of Cena, fans telling him how they were dying and he inspired them, how he gave them hope, when they had nothing, how Cena was the one who inspired them, and you see Cena cry, and you can see how much it means to him. That is one of the main reasons why John Cena will forever be my GOAT. Is he the best wrestler of all time? No. Is he the biggest draw of all time? Nah. Does he have the most championships, most 5 star matches, this and that? No. But like I said, there will never be another wrestler who has brought me as much joy as John Cena. And for that reason, he is my GOAT. So my question to you is, who was the wrestler that made you fall in love with wrestling? Who was the wrestler that gave you the most joy? Who is your GOAT?
Let me know below in the comments. I expect some Jeff Hardy, some John Cena, some Randy Orton, some Undertakers. I'm super excited. I'm going to read all the comments. Thank you guys for watching. It truly means a lot. More content coming soon. Like it if you like it. Dislike it if you dislike it. Uh, dislike it. And I'm out of here.